Okay, so he's spot on so far. There's really nothing new and innovative. We all get the concept. It's a giant battery on wheels. No joke, that's a lot of money. Actually, I don't think the pricing is too unreasonable at all here. But I think that's pretty industry standard, but is 9.6 kilowatts enough to run your house? Not for a modern home. Not for a modern home with multiple air conditioning units, electric clothes dryers, electric ovens. The smarter way to go solar. All right, guys, welcome back. So I've got a, a content for you today. It's going to be a little bit different. I came across this video on YouTube about the new GM home energy system. And of course, it's centered around the new all-electric Chevy Silverado, which has one of the largest, if not the largest, truck EV batteries available on the market. And so, you know, one of the things we've been covering on the channel is bi-directional EV charging and how electric vehicles tie in with a solar and battery system to make up part of the overall home energy ecosystem. So I'm gonna share this with you here, give you my thoughts and feedback on what GM is announcing. Um, again, my, my initial impression is that all of this is sort of initial marketing information. I don't know that there've been any successful installations of this system yet, but very interesting to see GM is throwing their hat in the ring, of course, with others like Tesla and Ford. So let's see what they have to offer. And it is the unveil of the GM Energy bi-directional charging system also storage, solar, all the integration. So we all love Tesla's integration, right? I mean, I filmed that video, hopefully you guys watched it with my friend Rob Laterra, who had the Model 3, the Model Y, the power walls, the inverters, the solar, and it all worked together as a total system. And we were like, the ecosystem is crazy. Well, GM must have watched that video. I'm just joking, that video <laughs> just went up. <laughs> they have been working on a similar thing. And here we actually have, at this very moment in time, this Silverado EV powering this 10,000 square foot house at the top of Beverly Hills with their system. And I'm gonna walk you through the system. I, of course, wanna show you the house because it's unbelievably cool. And uh, we're gonna meet with some of the engineers as well and talk about a whole bunch of energy stuff. So join me as we learn about the bi-directional GM energy solutions. I love when car companies, especially those that are building a large number of electric vehicles, are focusing on the thing beyond just the consumer of electricity, which is the car, and talking about how it can be a beneficial part of your life or help the grid or other things because you have so much energy capacity. And well, I think one of the things that we've seen electric vehicles do, especially F-150 Lightning and Silverado, is use onboard power to use for certain things. For example, this TV screen, these speakers are all running off this Silverado EV RST. And so there's power cables coming out of the front trunk. They got a bunch in the rear. They actually have a charge port um, powered situation right over here where this is a J1772 to a power brick. I showed this at the Silverado launch and uh, they also have the outlets back there up to 30 amp output, 240 volts. This one's at 80% state of charge and it can run for hours and hours running this system. So that was sort of the first step in exportable power from an electric vehicle beyond just using it for propulsion. And just being able to use the energy that you paid for, you go to a charging station, you pay, I don't know, 36, 40 cents a kilowatt hour, put it in a battery pack. It's so nice to be able to use something like this as basically a portable power brick that you can plug other stuff into. So we're used to the exportable power on the vehicles. What is interesting in this case, and something we have not really played around with ever on this channel, my friend Tom. Okay, so he's spot on so far. There's really nothing new and innovative about being able to run electrical loads directly plugged into the electric vehicle. We all get the concept. It's a giant battery on wheels. If I wanna tap in and use some of that power for portable power, I should be able to do that. But what we're really talking about here with bi-directional EV charging is integrating the vehicle power source or the vehicle battery storage with the home's electrical system, not only for bi-directional charging, but also for being able to interface with a home solar power system. Let's go back to the video. Malagny actually has the Ford bi-directional system installed at his house, and he did a fantastic overview of the uh, installation. But what we're talking about here is that similar thing, but with GM. So this is actually exportable power, DC out. So this is a CCS connection here, actually. So um, I'll walk through everyone how this works. And you're able to now power your entire home from your vehicle. Now, GM says by 2026, every single GM Ultium vehicle will have the hardware and the software to support this bi-directionality. That's pretty cool, not too far away. And most of them, I believe, will have them. Jordan, we know Silverado EV RST will have them. 
We just spoke to an owner with a lyric. He's getting his put in. He'll be the first one. Maybe we can do a podcast with him. A bunch yeah. of other ones too. Yeah, all, all Ultium vehicles. And they said other Ultium non-GM would potentially support it in the future. But that right, so that would too. be like Prologue, ZDX, yeah. et cetera. Okay, so let's walk through what we're actually seeing here. So this is your EVSE, but also a bi-directional unit. This is about $1,600, yep. which is, of course, everything here is quite a bit of money. Yeah, uh, And we should talk about the benefit of doing something like this versus just a backup generator. But this will charge the truck at up to 80 amps AC. You don't need 80 amps to run it, though. You can derate this to whatever the maximum your current allows for your home. Um, because, of course, a lot of panels in the house can't handle just a 100 amp dedicated circuit to run 80 amps of charging. So I think most people are comfortable with 19.2 kilowatt 80 amp home charging. Honestly, with a 240 kilowatt hour pack, Jordan, that doesn't seem unreasonable. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of battery to fill. <laughs> yeah, okay. But what's different about this than a normal EVSE? So basically what they're talking about is even if running the EV charger at full capacity, given the size of that battery, it's still gonna take over 10 hours if you have a, a battery at 0% or you know fully drained out to bring that battery up to 100% uh, full charge. Assuming you're using the, the largest battery variant that Chevy's offering, which is a 215 kilowatt hour uh, variant. But okay, so it's 80 amp, 80 amp max charge rate. Let's go back to the video. Is the CCS connection, which you're plugging in at home, a CCS connection. And that is the DC pins are actually is what take, is taking energy directly out of the battery pack. I, we should ask, I'm curious if it's doing it in split pack or in series, if it's high voltage or low voltage would be interesting. We'll definitely talk about that in the interviews. And that comes back into here, which is then fed to the inverter, which is a 9.6 kilowatt uh, DC to AC inverter. And what's interesting is it's only 9.6 kilowatts. So I guess cost goes up, you have to right size it for your home. But I think that's pretty industry standard, but is 9.6 kilowatts enough to run your house? I well, let me give you my opinion. So, 9.6 kilowatts, basically, first thing that jumps out to me is the, the inverter output capacity is only half of what the EV charger output capacity is, right? You're looking at 9.6 kilowatts compared to 19.2 kilowatts output on the EV charger itself. So this telling me the system as it's being presented right now is not going to be able to discharge battery power into the house uh, at only half the rate that it's able to accept charge into the battery. And is 9.6 kilowatts power enough for a true whole home backup? Not for a modern home, not for a modern home with multiple air conditioning units, electric clothes dryers, electric ovens. However, for pretty much all homes, I would say 9.6 kilowatts is more than adequate for critical load backup. And I'd like to see now how they actually have it connected if they're feeding the entire panel or if they're just feeding a, a sub panel with critical items. Let's go back to the video. I think it's enough to run mine, except for when I'm charging a vehicle. Yeah, but I, most houses, yeah. I mean, I charge a lot. So it would be great to charge another vehicle off of this in yeah. a power outage event, <laughs> but I could just plug it into this, of course. So, okay, interesting. So the way that it works is, let's say there's a power event. This is, uh, you know, you basically lose your grid connection. Um, this will isolate your grid connection. There's a, a automatic disconnect switch that happens in here. The whole process takes 40 seconds. We'll show you all how that works. DC comes out of the truck. You can even wake the truck up from a dead asleep situation. So the truck can be, you know, sitting for a week, basically completed at charging at 50% or 70% or whatever you want to set it to. 80% is probably what most people will charge to. Um, it'll wake the truck up 40 seconds later. As soon as the disconnect goes, it will start pulling DC out of the truck into the inver inverter and now into basically your power distribution power distribution box. This is basically a sub panel that you can hook up all the loads that you want backed up. Now, some houses, you will back up the entire house and you'll basically have the entire fuse panel in here. Some houses like this one, this is a quite a large house that might actually pull more than 9.6 kilowatts by the time you have cooking on, AC on, electric heating on. They've just put critical loads on this one and also the garage lights so that we can do this video for you in light because the house is completely disconnected from the grid right now. running. Okay, 
So the configuration he's demonstrating here is a critical load backup only limited to 9.6 kilowatts. So again, that's not gonna be enough to run a true whole house backup. If you're talking about a, a modern home with a 200 amp or a 400 amp service with multiple air conditioning units and other large heating element based appliances. Um, however, the thing that really caught me is that it appears that GM is rolling out its own inverter and transfer switch as well as EV charger. So again, getting back to this concept of the ecosystem, what I'm seeing so far is a proprietary ecosystem where if you wanna use GM's bi-directional EV charging capability, you're gonna to have to use their solar inverter and their transfer switch or gateway uh, as well. Let's see what else they have to offer. Coming off the Silverado, makes no noise at all. Really cool. Um, and so that's basically these three pieces of equipment. You have your power distribution box, your AC charger, your DC bi-directional, and your 9.6 kilowatt inverter that is also solar compatible. Now, my understanding is Delta does a lot of this stuff as the supplier. GM's not really confirming that, but that's just my understanding. All of this, including the dark start battery, which is really important because of course, if you lose power, you isolate the system from the grid, you need something to wake up your EVSE, to tell the truck to start sending power back, to wake up the inverter. This is like only, I think they said eight watt hours? Something like that, yeah. A really small amount of energy, but it's just enough to keep the communications boxes running until you get the truck back home or your car back home. It doesn't have to be a Silverado. It could be an Equinox EV that could do this, which is really cool. This whole system is $7,300 on the website, is my understanding, before installation. No joke, that's a lot of money. Yeah. I've Actually, I don't think the pricing is too unreasonable at all here, considering what you're getting. If, you, if you're getting the full full house, or, or at least the, um, the highest capacity available that they have, inverter, transfer switch, the bi-directional EV charger, um, so that pretty much handles all your your major solar balance of system, right? Especially if, if the EV if the EV itself is going to play the role of battery storage. So really, all you have to do is deliver your solar DC to the inverter. Now, my question is, can this inverter AC couple as well? For those of you out there that already have existing solar system on your roof. Um, or maybe for those of you who want to use some of the more market leading solar MLPE or inverter providers like Solar Edge or Enphase, can this system be added on to an existing Solar Edge or Enphase system, or does it have to be all proprietary GM DC coupled end to end? So hopefully we'll learn more about that as we go on. $7,500, but yeah, plus installation. No, the website's 73. Oh, well, they, they, mentioned, they said 75, yeah. but I, on the website, it's 73, uh, 72.99. Nice. Uh, that's a lot of money for power only during a power outage because right now this system can only work in this configuration when the grid is completely disconnected from the house. Mm -hmm. So you can't like start pulling power in from the truck when electricity is expensive and blend them all together and try and save on the bill. It's just when there's an outage, your truck has to be plugged in and that will power the house. It's yep. a pretty edge case right now, but where it starts to make more sense to me is when you start bringing in battery storage. Yep. This is when we get into the situation of a total ecosystem. I don't personally think this system makes sense without battery storage. I love the idea of battery storage. I like the idea of being able to utilize the truck more when the house is uh, connected to the grid still. And you basically there's two variants of these battery packs i'll have to learn what they are i think seven kilowatt hour bricks and 10 kilowatt hour bricks roughly plus or minus i think and you can stack them up to about 35 kilowatt hours total so um certainly not as much energy capacity as tesla allows with powerwall but i actually don't think you need that much home battery capacity uh especially if you have a vehicle with 240 kilowatt hours what you need is enough that to hold your house over when you run to the store to grab milk or get, I don't know, do whatever you have to do for a couple hours in town, come back, and then you can replenish this from the truck. Now, we're not totally sure how the integration options of this and the vehicle will be with the whole system, um, but I'm really hoping this is actually launching at a little bit later date. This all launches today, and it's available to order, and they have fantastic, truly fantastic websites with lots of info. Uh, this, I'm curious about how it will... Um, you know, integration options, but there's going to be an app similar to the Tesla app. We're filming on my phone, right, Jordan? Yep. Uh, otherwise, I would show you all, but I'll le leave a link in the description to how Tesla does all of this stuff. What I'd like to do is talk to one of the folks in charge of this project. Okay, guys. So I think you get the basic, the basic idea here. So GM is rolling out their bi-directional home energy solution that includes the bi-directional charger, 
the transfer switch with critical load circuits, the solar battery inverter, and then they have the black start battery, which is enough to provide a little bit of power to the EV charger to, to activate the bi-directional nature of it. Um, I don't agree that every home should have its own dedicated home battery storage as well. Uh, he didn't mention pricing on their home battery stack there. But what we're seeing overall is that the cost per kilowatt hour for stationary home batteries is like three to five times the cost per kilowatt hour for an electric vehicle battery. So for those of you out there that are considering making an investment in a giant EV uh, with battery storage in excess of 200 kilowatt hours, like the Chevy, uh, Chevy Silverado uh, EV RST offers, you're gonna wanna be able to use that as your battery, even if you don't have a dedicated home battery. Uh, now he mentions that for right now, the, the only use case that they offer for bi-directional is uh, for emergency power during a blackout when you, the home is disconnected from the grid. Uh, perhaps in the future, they may have some updates where that, that bi-directional functionality can be utilized for more of a time of use purposes. Uh, for, exa for example, those of you who are in California or Arizona, you'll know that uh, during late afternoon, early evening, when the utility charges you peak rates, that may be a time when you wanna draw off the vehicle battery to power the home using stored energy from the vehicle battery. And then you can just recharge the vehicle after midnight when, when the rates go down or just wait the next day for the solar panels to take over and recharge the battery that way. So I think, you know, I'm leaving this with probably more questions than answers, but I wanted to share this with you guys because this, this is one of the big questions that the industry is going to have to answer uh, over the next couple of years. I know consumers particularly consumers that have already made an investment in part of this ecosystem, whether they already have solar, they wanna add an EV and integrate them, or they've already made the investment in an EV and they wanna be able to tie that into their home solar system and get maximum functionality out of it. But really what this comes down to, in my view guys, is, is, is we need standards. Uh, we need standards because I, I, as, as nice as the ecosystem idea is, uh, personally, I might be reluctant to go all in on, on the GM solar energy ecosystem, even though I might be sold on a GM vehicle. Um, I would like to see something where, if, again, if you have an existing solar edge or end phase system and you want to interface the electric vehicle for bi-directional storage purposes, that there's a way that these things can play nice together. And I think that's really where the industry is right now is, is negotiations between the auto manufacturers and the solar equipment manufacturers so that we can agree on standards so that we're not locked into these proprietary ecosystems. Uh, but of course, folks, that's why we do these videos here to make sure that you're up to date with the latest product, uh, technology and industry information. Uh, so as always, if you like the, the videos and you're getting good value from the videos that you watch on Solar Surge, uh, make sure you give us that thumbs up uh, and also hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. So as we have new videos like this coming out, It'll come up on your feed so you can stay up to date with us. Well, that pretty much does it for today's video. I appreciate you spending some more time on the channel. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. All right, I hope you're getting some great value from today's video content. Now, if you would like to have your business or product or technology featured on the Solar Surge channel, we can help you do that. Feel free to use the link below to set up a call with our media team so that we can discuss your marketing goals and how Solar Surge can help you get there. Solar Surge is the leading online community in the U.S. residential solar and energy storage space. And so if you would like to have your business or product or technology introduced to our audience, we can help you do that. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to us on the link below to set up a call with our media team or email media at solarsurge.net.